It's like hell. You be in your cell all day, you be hungry all the time. This ain't a place to come because it's rough in here. In the darkest corners of the world, there exist places where humanity is pushed to the brink of collapse. Prisons that have redefined suffering, where conditions are so brutal and inhumane that death is often seen as a merciful release. From Rwanda's notorious Gitarama prison, where brutality reigns supreme, to Russia's Black Dolphin prison, where despair suffocates the soul, these facilities don't just punish, they annihilate hope and destroy the human spirit. Join us on a gripping journey as we dive into nine prisons that are worse than death. There are, I don't know, maybe 500 people in this little tiny room. Number nine, Gitarama prison, Rwanda. Deep in Rwanda's heart, a notorious prison festers, its walls echoing with the cries of the damned. Gitarama, now known as Muhanga, has long been a thorn in the side of human rights groups like Amnesty International. Gitarama prison, a place where humanity is pushed to its limits, is a breeding ground for unspeakable horrors. This foreboding penitentiary is home to the most dangerous of criminals, robbers, rapists, murderers, and violent offenders, all crammed into a space meant for a fraction of their number. With a staggering 6,000 to 7,000 inmates packed into a facility designed for just 600, the result is a nightmare of overcrowding, where prisoners spend their days standing with no respite from the suffocating conditions. The tiny cells, mere meters in size, are devoid of ceilings, leaving inmates exposed to the elements. The results are catastrophic. Every day, seven to eight captives perish from the horrible conditions they endure. Some fight violent fights or even turn to cannibalism in order to survive. Having nothing to lose, these desperate individuals will stop at nothing to gain respect or escape, creating a hellish cycle of violence and despair. Without a sewer system, the facility has become a cesspool of filth where inmates are forced to wade through their own waste, battling swarms of mosquitoes that feast on their suffering. The unthinkable reality is that prisoners are compelled to walk barefoot through this toxic landscape, exposing them to the risk of gangrene, a condition that rots flesh and bones due to a lack of blood flow. This merciless environment has turned the prison into a death trap, where the slightest misstep can lead to the decay of limbs and the slightest infection can become a fatal sentence. In a staggering escalation of horror, 38% of inmates referred to the nearby hospital bear the brutal scars of trauma wounds, including ruptured eardrums and flesh torn by the vicious bites of their fellow prisoners. While 41% suffer from the gruesome consequences of rotting feet, ravaged by the unsanitary conditions that force them to stand barefoot in squalid waters at the crippling cost of amputated toes, feet, and legs, a testament to the prison's unrelenting cruelty. And yet, despite the overwhelming need, Gitarama's medical facilities are woefully inadequate, with a solitary hospital building struggling to cope with the influx of dysentery cases. The hospital's meager capacity is perpetually overwhelmed, with multiple patients crammed onto filthy mattresses, begging for scraps of medical attention from the lone full-time doctor and his team of eight overworked healthcare workers. As skin infections, wounds, and malnutrition skyrocket, the medical staff are tragically ill-equipped to stem the tide of suffering, leaving the inmates to wish for nothing but death. The conditions here are completely inhumane. It's urgent that they are improved, said Brigitte Troyon of the International Committee of the Red Cross, which is providing medical and other assistance to Rwanda's prisons. Half a dozen people are dying in Gitarama every day. If an epidemic breaks out, there's no knowing how many could die. Repeated pleas from human rights organizations have fallen on deaf ears, as the appalling conditions at Gitarama prison remain stubbornly unchanged, despite fervent protests and condemnations from advocates for human dignity and justice. Number 8. Rikers Island, New York City. In the shadows of the city that never sleeps, a forsaken island lurks, concealed from the bright lights and bustling streets of New York City. This enigmatic landmass, Rikers Island, 
The city's main jail complex is a notorious abyss of abuse and neglect, where up to 15,000 prisoners are confined in a culture of fear and violence on its 413 acres. Behind its imposing walls, Inmates tremble in terror at the ruthless correctional officers who wield their power with impunity, meeting out cruel punishments and ignoring pleas for help. The prison's gruesome reputation is etched in the scars of its victims, who were subjected to merciless beatings, sexual assaults, and neglect. Rikers Island is a ticking time bomb of violence, a powder keg of physical and mental abuse, where the vulnerable are preyed upon and the voices of the oppressed are silenced. This festering sore on the city's conscience has drawn the ire of the press and the judiciary, resulting in damning rulings against the New York City government. Within its cold, unforgiving walls, thousands of criminals awaiting trial, serving sentences, or merely passing through on their way to other facilities are held within this jail. But beware, for this forsaken place has earned a reputation as one of the most depraved and inhumane correctional facilities in the United States, a distinction solidified by its ranking in Mother Jones Magazine's 2013 list of the 10 worst prisons in the country. Here in this bleak and forsaken world, sexual assaults, brutal beatings, and callous neglect are the norm with officers reveling in the power to inflict pain and suffering on the vulnerable. The mentally ill are particularly preyed upon, and their cries for help are met with mocking laughter and sadistic indifference. The sick and the dying are left to rot, their pleas for medical attention ignored or mocked by the very officers sworn to protect them. Inside the notorious Rikers Island, a staggering 80% of detainees are held without a conviction, forced to endure a nightmare of physical and psychological torture as they await trial. The assault on their dignity is multifaceted, with verbal, sexual, and emotional abuse inflicted by their captors. Privacy is a distant memory, as some are even denied the basic human right of solitude while using the toilet, subject to the constant gaze of police officers. Meanwhile, the facility's infrastructure is crumbling, staffing shortages exacerbate the chaos, and the pandemic has created a perfect storm of danger and degradation. Outside, family members are frantic for news as their loved ones languish in inhumane conditions, trapped by a backlogged court system that seems deaf to their pleas. Eileen Marr, a leader in the vocal New York movement, was trapped in a nightmare when she couldn't afford the exorbitant $75,000 bail. She spent 420 days on Rikers Island, awaiting trial and fighting to maintain her sanity. In a desperate bid to escape the hellish conditions, she accepted a guilty plea for a jewelry theft she vehemently denies committing. Now, she's a vocal advocate for the closure of the notorious jail complex, determined to ensure no one else suffers the same ordeal she endured. In there, you are no longer a human being. The corrections officers said this to us on a daily basis. Rikers Island is a cesspit of sexual violence, where predators roam free, brazenly breaking into female prison cells to commit heinous rapes, while other inmates stand guard, complicit in the horror. The notorious facility abandoned strip searches in 1986, citing the unbearable suffering they inflicted on victims, who were subjected to humiliating group searches involving invasive genital and anal probes. The living conditions are abysmal, with officials reveling in cruelty, driving many to the brink of despair and beyond. The trauma is so unbearable that some inmates have chosen suicide as a desperate escape from the unrelenting misery. Benji Lozano's words capture the essence of Rikers Island. Hell, inhumane, disgusting, a place where humanity goes to die. Number 7. Diyarbakir Prison, Turkey Behind the bleak walls of southeastern Turkey, a prison lurks like a dark shadow, its reputation for brutality so notorious that Time magazine dubbed it the world's fourth worst prison in 2008. Diyarbakir Prison's sinister history began in the 1980s when it was born from the ashes of a military coup. 
the facility soon transformed into a torture chamber, where Kurds were unfairly detained and subjected to unimaginable suffering. In this forsaken prison, the wards are indirectly identified with terms like disco and welcome to mask the unspeakable horrors within. The sadistic guards bask in their cruelty, subjecting inmates to an onslaught of torture tactics that defy humanity. The gruesome repertoire includes beatings, hair pulling, stripping, blindfolding, and hosing down, merely a taste of the endless suffering that comes next. Solitary confinement, insults, and constant intimidation are the norm, with death threats and forced salutes to the captain's sadistic dog, Joe, trained to inflict genital bites on naked prisoners. The atrocities escalate to sleep and sensory deprivation, falaka beatings, electric shocks, cigarette burns, nail and tooth extractions, sexual assault, and rectal examinations. A litany of cruelty that would make even the most hardened criminals shudder. The depths of depravity in this prison are unfathomable. A Dante's Inferno, where hope goes to die. Mehdi Zana, the former mayor of Diyarbakir, who spent 11 years in the prison, explains, When a new prisoner arrived at the prison, Captain Esat met him at the entrance and then turned to a guard and said, Prepare him a bath, then take him to the dormitory. This was a ritual, so almost 20 guards accompanied the prisoner. He received a good welcome thrashing, and then he was dragged, unconscious, to the bath, a bathtub full of feces in which they left him for a few hours. Despite the numerous accounts, few testimonies have emerged from female prisoners who were held in a separate ward. Nuran Chamla Marashla shared a striking example revealing that 75 women were crammed into a ward designed for 25 prisoners. Although women were not considered equal to men, they faced equal brutality in the Diyarbakir prison, enduring torture, isolation, and military-style discipline. For years, they were subjected to the same harsh conditions that soldiers face in their barracks. In the early 1980s, the Turkish state's policy in Diyarbakir military prison was marked by the systematic use of torture and forced confessions, specifically targeting Kurdish prisoners. Detainees were routinely coerced into repentance and confession, regardless of their actual involvement or alleged crimes. In Diyarbakir prison, extracting any information, no matter how trivial, who laughed, who moved during sleep, or who held a political leadership position, was used as a pretext for further brutality. Confessing, even to minor details, was seen as a betrayal by political groups, transforming the prisoner into an agent of self-betrayal and self-destruction. According to a former prisoner, becoming an informant and confessing was the ultimate shame in Diyarbakir prison, a stain that couldn't be washed away. Torture in Diyarbakir prison was not just physical or psychological harm, but a political tool used to crush Kurdish identity, eliminate political opposition, and create submissive subjects. The extraction of forced confessions was an integral part of this brutal practice, serving the state's dark political agenda. Number 6. The Gildani Prison, Georgia. On September 18, 2012, a jaw-dropping revelation rocked the nation of Georgia as clandestine videos surfaced, revealing the darkest depths of corruption and brutality within Gildani No. 8 prison. The chilling footage showed prison guards and their superiors mercilessly torturing, taunting, and sexually assaulting detainees, confirming long-whispered allegations of systemic abuse. This scandal marked a watershed moment in Georgian history, as social media ignited the spark of outrage, forcing the pro-government television channels to finally acknowledge the horrors lurking in the shadows of their prison system. Outrage swept across Georgia as shocking video footage of prison abuse sparked widespread protests in cities like Tbilisi, Batumi, Poti, Kutaisi, and Gori. Horrified by the graphic images, demonstrators demanded justice and vowed to continue their rallies until action was taken. The protests led to the resignations of several political leaders. The leaked footage, 
obtained by former prison officer Vladimir Bedukadze, exposed the systemic torture and brutality within Gildani prisons, including beatings, simulated drowning, and deliberate bone-breaking by guards and officials. Bedukadze, who fled to Belgium, initially faced charges but was later granted immunity in exchange for his cooperation in uncovering the scope of the abuse. Former prisoners shared harrowing accounts of the institutionalized torture they endured, leading to a national reckoning with the dark realities of the Gildani prison system. Other victims who testified in the 2016 report by the Georgian Parliament's Human Rights and Civil Integration Committee on Torture in the Country from 2004 to 2012 described being subjected to unimaginable brutality including being hit on the head with the butt of a gun, a guard breaking their wrist with the heel of his boot, and being forced to give evidence while incapacitated and vulnerable under the influence of sleeping pills. They also recounted being subjected to physical and psychological abuse, including beatings, threats, and humiliation, often with the intention of extracting false confessions. The victims' testimonies painted a harrowing picture of a justice system that perpetuated fear, intimidation, and violence, leaving survivors with deep physical and emotional scars. According to an Open Society Foundation report, this approach resulted in appalling conditions within Gildani prisons, where life was unhygienic, undignified, and hazardous. As non-governmental organizations continued to expose widespread mistreatment and impunity within the justice system, it became clear that Georgia's pursuit of justice had devolved into a culture of brutality and abuse, where human rights were frequently trampled. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. Beyond the bars, a world of unimagined horror awaits. Prisons, meant to correct and rehabilitate, have become dens of unspeakable brutality where the toughest of criminals quiver with fear. The inhumane conditions are so gut-wrenching, words fail to convey the anguish of those trapped behind bars. Even after freedom is granted, the mental scars often prove too much to bear, leaving suicide as the only escape. The truth behind these prison walls is far more sinister than you ever imagined. What do you think is the most common misconception about the prison system and incarceration? And how can we work to shift the public's perception to better align with reality and promote positive reform? Join the conversation and share your thoughts with us in the comments section down below. Now, let's get back to the video. Number 5. Bang Kwong Central Prison Bang Kwong Central Prison is a formidable fortress that has earned the ominous nickname Big Tiger for its reputation of devouring hope and freedom. Bang Kwong Central Prison, a maximum security behemoth, has been the stuff of nightmares since the 1930s. Within its sprawling 80-acre compound, an impressive 8,000 prisoners are held, double its intended capacity. This foreboding institution has become a byword for fear, housing some of Asia's most dangerous criminals as well as foreign prisoners who've fallen foul of Thai law. In his gripping memoir, The Damage Done, Warren Fellows, a former inmate and drug trafficker, reveals the chilling nickname Big Tiger bestowed upon Bang Kwong Central Prison by the Thais because it prowled and ate. Notoriously, Bang Kwong houses Thailand's primary men's death row and execution chamber, earning its reputation as one of the world's most brutal prisons. There are few prisons in the world whose conditions are as harsh as Bang Kwong Central Prison, located on the outskirts of Bangkok, Thailand. Bang Kwong Central Prison was purpose-built to house the most dangerous and hardened criminals, those awaiting appeal or Supreme Court sentences, lifers, and those on death row. Its notorious reputation as one of Asia's toughest prisons has been grounded over the years, with brutal conditions claiming countless lives and sanity. Upon arrival, inmates are shackled with leg irons for three months, a psychological blow that severely restricts their movement. The clanking of chains and the weight of iron on their legs serve as a constant reminder of their captivity. Death row prisoners are perpetually chained, awaiting their fate by firing squad or lethal injection. This practice mercifully ended in 2013, 
the prison had a fascinating hierarchical system known as the Chit system. This complex internal structure governed prisoner dynamics and survival, with food rationing being a key aspect. In this system, prisoners' access to food was determined by their standing with the cantina, creating a delicate balance of power and survival. A meager bowl of rice and vegetables was the only free provision, while everything else had to be bought. This created a stark contrast where affluent inmates could afford to hire fellow prisoners as personal servants, offering them extra food in exchange for their services. In recent times, this harsh reality has prompted foreign prisoners to organize charity drives solely to collect funds for better sustenance, highlighting the dire need for basic necessities. Number 4. Black Dolphin Prison Russia's prisons are infamous for their harsh conditions, but one stands out as the most formidable and feared, the Black Dolphin Prison. Located in Soliletsk, Orenburg Oblast, near the Kazakhstan border, this maximum security facility is one of the oldest and most notorious in the country. Established as a place of exile for criminals, its grim reputation is matched only by the eerie sculpture of a black dolphin crafted by prisoners themselves, which guards the entrance. This maximum security facility is home to 700 of Russia's most depraved and dangerous criminals, pedophiles, cannibals, and serial killers, who have claimed the lives of approximately 3,500 innocent victims. That's an average of five murders per inmate. The prison's harsh regime is designed to keep these dangerous individuals in check. Inmates are confined to tiny isolation cells with three steel doors, effectively trapping them in a cell within a cell. Their only respite comes in the form of a 90-minute daily exercise period, where they are allowed to pace in a large cage while their cells are thoroughly searched for contraband. Under the constant gaze of 24-hour surveillance, prisoners are denied even the simplest comforts. They are forbidden from sitting or resting on their bunks from dawn until dusk, forced to stand in a perpetual state of discomfort. The Black Dolphin's unyielding grip is suffocating, a constant reminder that these inmates are being held accountable for their heinous crimes. With military precision, guards issue commands, demanding an instantaneous response. Yes, sir. Every 15 minutes, a watchful eye scrutinizes the inmates, ensuring compliance with the rules. No communal dining hall exists. Instead, prisoners are confined to their cells and fed a diet of soup four times a day. Reading material is their sole solace. Books, newspapers, and radio broadcasts are their only connection to the outside world. Blindfolds are placed on new arrivals, disorienting them, preventing any attempt to chart the prison's layout, and crushing any hope of escape or rebellion. This sensory deprivation continues during transportation, rendering inmates helpless and lost. Guards employ a distinctive escort technique, bending prisoners at the waist and grasping their handcuffed hands high behind their backs. It prevents them from escaping or attacking prison staff, also rendering the inmates utterly dependent on their captors. Nikolai Ostankov, jailed for killing an entire family, then burning their bodies in the forest, told National Geographic. If you constantly think about what is here, what is waiting for you, that you won't ever get free, that you are left here alone, you simply won't make it. One prison lieutenant told National Geographic that the only way to escape is by death. No inmate has ever escaped from Black Dolphin. Number 3. La Sabaneta Behind the foreboding walls of Caracas's most notorious prison, La Sabaneta has earned a reputation as one of the most ruthless in Latin America, where the boundaries between hell and earth are blurred. Like a number of other penal institutions in South America, La Sabaneta struggles with understaffing and overcrowding. Prisoners are forced to endure squalid conditions with scant access to medical care, nutritious food, and potable water, all while violence and chaos reign unchecked. La Sabaneta is a place where hope is a luxury few can afford. 
The overcrowding at La Sabaneta prison is just the tip of the iceberg as the facility grapples with a multitude of pressing issues. The presence of rival gangs vying for power within the prison's walls leads to frequent and brutal clashes, often resulting in violent confrontations. Inmates frequently turn on each other and, in some cases, target the correctional officers, making the work environment hazardous and highly volatile. As a result, being a prison guard at La Sabaneta is an extremely challenging and unenviable profession. For years, powerful gangs, led by a dominant Pran inmate, held sway over the prison, exerting control and fostering a culture of violence. However, the facility's troubled history came to an end after 55 years when the government intervened, shuttering the prison and paving the way for its transformation into a museum. The catalyst for this closure was a devastating riot on January 3, 1994, sparked by ongoing gang tensions. Inmates set fires and attacked fellow prisoners attempting to flee, resulting in numerous casualties. As security forces struggled to regain control, the violence escalated, with estimates suggesting over 150 prisoners lost their lives, making it one of the deadliest prison riots in history. The tragic riot at Sabanita Prison shone a light on the deplorable state of Venezuela's correctional facilities, earning it the notorious distinction of being one of the deadliest prison incidents on record. According to the Venezuelan Prison Observatory, a human rights organization that monitors the country's prison system, Sabanita Prison stands out as the most violent in Venezuela. The observatory's disturbing findings reveal that a staggering 80% of Venezuelan prisons are effectively controlled by armed inmates, with security personnel exercising minimal or no authority, perpetuating a culture of chaos and fear. Number 2. The Scorpion Prison. Torah Maximum Security Prison, ominously dubbed The Scorpion, built in 1993, this imposing supermax prison in Helwan, just south of Cairo, has earned a reputation for its unyielding grip on some of the country's most prominent political prisoners and government opponents. Within its unforgiving walls, influential figures from the Muslim Brotherhood and the April 6 youth movement languish, their voices silenced by the harsh realities of incarceration. The Scorpion's notorious name strikes fear into the hearts of those who dare challenge the government. Each ward, in high security, is completely separated from the rest of the prison once its armored outer gate is closed, so the detainees are not even able to communicate through cells, as prisoners do in regular prisons, as a result of the huge quantities of reinforced concrete that prevent sound from traveling. Inmates endure a harsh reality of mistreatment, malnutrition, and isolation. Many are denied access to their loved ones and legal counsel, driving them to desperate measures like mass hunger strikes. The dire conditions have led to a health crisis. With over 1,000 political prisoners vulnerable to the spread of scabies and other skin diseases, their well-being is hanging precariously in the balance. The prison's oppressive environment has created a ticking time bomb of human suffering, where the most basic human rights are routinely violated. The prevalence of skin conditions such as scabies, psoriasis, ringworm, and fungal infections in prison is exacerbated by the restriction on medical and healthcare supplies, including essential treatments for these ailments. Even basic hygiene products like soap are scarce, with prisoners receiving only one bar every few months, which is then shared among multiple detainees. The prison shop occasionally stocks soap but in limited quantities and at exorbitant prices, making it inaccessible to many inmates, thereby perpetuating the cycle of illness. The prison's unsanitary conditions are further compounded by a mosquito infestation, which has led to widespread malaria infections among the inmates. The sweltering humidity during the summer months exacerbates the issue, making the environment even more unbearable. The prison's design ensures that no natural sunlight enters the cells, resulting in a severe lack of vitamin D and a plethora of related health issues. Temperatures inside the prison are extreme, reaching unbearable heights in summer and freezing lows in winter due to the absence of air conditioning. 
It was designed so that those who go in don't come out again unless dead. Major General Ibrahim Abd al-Ghaffar, a former Scorpion warden, said during a television interview in 2012. Notably, Scorpion Prison has held high-profile inmates, including those accused of involvement in the assassinations of President Anwar al-Sadat in 1981 and Speaker of Parliament Rifat el-Mahgoub in 1990. Number 1. Camp 22, North Korea North Korea, infamous for its authoritarian dynasty and dire living conditions, operates one of the most notorious detention systems, where the trauma experienced by survivors leaves lasting scars. The now-defunct Horyong Concentration Camp, also known as Hengyong or Kualiso Penal Labor Colony No. 22, was a maximum security facility shrouded in secrecy, entirely cut off from the outside world. Reports suggest that this death camp was shut down in 2012, but the horrors that unfolded within its walls continue to haunt those who managed to escape. The Haryong concentration camp was heavily guarded by approximately 1,000 security personnel and 500 to 600 administrative staff who exercised total control over the facility. The guards were armed with an arsenal of weapons, including automatic rifles, machine guns, hand grenades, clubs, whips, and trained dogs to maintain brutal control over the inmates. During the 1990s, the camp held an estimated 50,000 prisoners, primarily comprising individuals who had spoken out against the government or were deemed politically untrustworthy, including those suspected of disloyalty or dissent. Former guard An Myong Chol recounts the appalling conditions at Horyong concentration camp, where he was struck by the sight of emaciated prisoners resembling walking skeletons, dwarfs, and cripples clad in tattered rags. The inmates' physical appearance was a testament to the brutal treatment they endured, with approximately 30% bearing grotesque deformities, including severed ears, shattered eyes, misshapen noses, and faces disfigured by deep scars and cuts. The camp's brutality was further evident in the estimated 2,000 prisoners who had lost limbs, yet were still forced to toil, even those who required crutches to stand. The torture methods employed at Horyong were notoriously merciless, leaving survivors with permanent physical and psychological scars, a haunting reminder of the camp's unrelenting cruelty. The prisoner is subjected to unfathomable torment, forced to endure water torture for 24 hours, standing on their toes in a tank filled to their nose, causing unbearable physical and psychological distress. They are then stripped and hung upside down from the ceiling, mercilessly beaten and confined to a tiny solitary cell for days or weeks, unable to stand or lie down, with barely enough room to sit. The cruelty continues as they are forced to kneel with a wooden bar inserted near their knee hollows, cutting off blood circulation, rendering them unable to walk and potentially leading to death months later. They are tied to the wall, hands fixed at a height of 60 centimeters, forced to crouch for hours, their dignity and humanity utterly disregarded. Reports of human experimentation at Heng Yong Ri further reveal the depth of depravity with prisoners facing daily beatings for minor infractions used as martial arts targets and subjected to rampant rape and sexual violence, with female prisoners coerced into submission under threat of death. The sheer brutality and inhumanity of these atrocities defy comprehension, leaving survivors with indelible scars and a proof to the shameful cruelty of the camp. Thanks for watching and see you in our next video.